Welcome back. Based on a new report from Redfin, rent for a typical house in the US is very close to an all-time record high. But there's much more to this story though, because I would argue that average rent prices are effectively much lower than this because the landlords are now offering concessions in order to attract renters as vacancies are close to two-year highs. Therefore, this means that rents are effectively coming down on paper, even though the declines are not showing up in the data. And in today's video, I'm going to share all the details. Let's first have a look at Redfin's methodology about how they came up with this data here. It says asking prices, or the data on this, includes single-family houses, multifamily units, such as apartment buildings, condos, co-ops, and townhouses from rent.com and redfin.com. Uh, here's a key um, stat here, or a key uh, thing you, you guys should be aware of here. So um, prices reflect the current cost of new leases during each time frame. In other words, the amount shown as the median rent is not the median rent of what current renters are paying right now. Instead, it's the median asking price of apartments that were available to new renters during the report month. Uh, a key takeaway here, this is a leading indication of asking rents because they're not looking at, you know, someone has a, you know, a, a, an apartment in which they lived in for 20 years and they're paying below market rent. Instead, they're looking at uh, the median asking rent of new leases. So just take that into consideration when talking about today's video here. Um, there's a few things I really want to touch on, so let's kind of uh, share the rest of this here. It says here, the U.S. median asking rent in August was $2,052 per month, just $2 per month shy of the all-time record high that was set back in August of last year. Uh, in other words, down by only 0.1% year over year. It is, however, up slightly, um, up by 0.7% uh, from one month ago. Uh, when the typical asking rent was $2,038 per month. Now, here is the uh, key takeaway regarding uh, this report, in my personal opinion, and I'll share some uh, details regarding how concessions play a role in sales, home sales, and also rents as well. It says, while asking rents are near all-time record highs, tenants in some parts of the country are finding deals. With vacancies on the rise, uh, I have some stats to share regarding that. With vacancies on the rise, some landlords are doling out one-time discounts in order to attract renters while maintaining high asking rents on paper. This means rents are effectively coming down in some areas, even though the declines are not showing up in the data here. Uh, according to uh, was this uh, Redfin's uh, chief executive officer of rent, uh, a year ago, you really didn't see any concessions in the market. Now, fast forward uh, to today, there have been far more common now, with landlords offering from one to three months free in an effort to attract new tenants without lowering their asking rents. Now, let's first talk about uh, vacancy rates, and I'll talk about uh, concessions uh, in today's video here. So the national uh, vacancy rate for the second quarter of this year was 6.3%. Um, also, on a side note, the um, home ownership rate was 65.9%. Uh, anyways, here's a chart right here looking at a rental vacancy rates going back to the year of 2000. So as you can see right here, um, vacancy rates um, have been on the rise for the past you know, few quarters or so, but historically speaking, we're still at very, very low levels, uh, especially compared to 2008 uh, when we peaked at about 11% around the Great Recession. So here's a look at uh, vacancy rates over the previous, uh, was this, uh, since 2018. So right now, the rate is at 6.3%. Something to keep in mind is that uh, in the first quarter this year, the rate was 6.4%. At that time, that was a two-year high. The highest uh, vacancy rates we've had going back to the first quarter of 2021 when at that time, the vacancy rate was 6.8%. So therefore, at 6.3%, uh, this uh, second quarter, uh, it's more or less uh, a two-year high, not too far off of that. Also, something to be aware of as well, in the second quarter last year, and also the fourth quarter in 2021, the vacancy rate was only 5.6%. Based on my own nerdy analysis here, that at that time was a 37-year low. 
In other words, the lowest vacancy rates going back to Q2 of 1984. Here's a look at our good Uncle Fred. And of course, the source here is the US Census Bureau here. So when the rate was 5.6% just about one year ago in the second quarter of 2022, at 5.6%, that was the lowest rate going back to Q2 of 1984, when at that time the rate was 5.5%. It's also worth mentioning that 6.3% in the second quarter this year, this is still historically low as well. So for example, um, right at the onset of COVID, or let's just say right before it, in Q4 2019, the vacancy rate was 6.4%. When at that time, it was also historically low as well. The lowest levels going back in at least the past several decades. Now, going back to Redfin's report here saying that uh, landlords are giving concessions to home buyers or not home buyers, uh, renters. I want to share uh, uh, two examples of you guys regarding uh, how concessions play a role regarding home sales and also rents as well. Uh, let's first talk about home sales. Let's just say a house uh, sold for $700,000. That was an all-time record high in that neighborhood. But what we don't know when looking at you know, Realtor.com, Redfin, Zillow, any online app, you typically are not going to see the amount of concessions that were given to the home buyer. So in this example, let's just say the buyer has $100,000 in out-of-pocket expenses, which is their uh, closing costs plus their down payment, just to have a round even number. 100,000. But let's say the builder or home seller gave the buyer a $25,000 credit. This means their out of pocket expenses is not going to be 100,000, but it's going to be $75,000. So therefore, for agents um, looking at uh, valuing houses, looking at comparable sales, and also for appraisers also valuing properties as well, they're actually going to view this as a $675,000 home sale and not a $700,000 home sale. By the way, these uh, closing cost credits is exactly why brand new home construction sales have been on the rise. Uh, so home sales uh, for brand new home construction have increased by 32% uh, from July last year through July this year. In other words, this would be labeled as a $700,000 home sale, but it does not take in consideration any closing cost credits given to the home buyer. Therefore, I think we all can agree that a $700,000 home sale is a lot different when looking at concessions given to a home buyer. Let me also provide some examples as well. Uh, let's say this example here, uh, at $25,000 concession or a closing cost credit, the net effect of that is a $675,000 home sale. Uh, this is exactly the same as a $690,000 home sale and the uh, buyer is given $15,000 as a credit or $680,000 with a $5,000 closing cost credit, or a $675,000 home sale and no closing cost credit or no concessions given to the home buyer. It all nets exactly the same. Even though when you're going online, you don't see this taking place. Let me dive a little bit deeper here. Let's just say this right here was a sale that occurred one year ago. The buyer bought the house uh, for uh, $675,000 and didn't get any concessions whatsoever. Look at this though. Let's assume that uh, the house in that neighborhood sold for $700,000. That would appear that home prices are going up by about $25,000, all things being equal, saying that this is basically the same house. But when taking consideration that the in this example here, the buyer received a $25,000 credit, that implies a $675,000 sale which is virtually exactly the same as this example right here. One more thing I do want to note um, is this right here. In my marketplace, which is the greater Sacramento area, uh, when a house gets sold, the listing agent uh, marks whether any concessions were given to the buyer. And if so, uh, what does that look like? You know, how much did the uh, home seller give to the buyer? So, you know, something to ask your, your agent, depending on where you live, if he's given you or she or she is given you uh, comparable sales to support an asking price or to support a offering price on a house, if you're looking to buy a house, then that's something to ask your uh, real estate agent. Are any of these comparable sales um, have any um, big concessions that we should take into consideration? Let's also discuss how this impacts rents as well. Let's say the um, asking rent is $2,000 per month. 
that means you're gonna pay approximately $24,000 per year for that renter, that rental uh, unit. Well, let's assume though, the landlord's offering two free months of rent, therefore a concession of $4,000. This means your actual rent or your net rent for the year is actually $20,000, 24,000 less 4,000 in free rent. Therefore, your actual rent per month is actually $1,667 per month and not $2,000 per month. Even though when you're looking at it, it looks like the uh, landlord is asking for $2,000 when in fact, they're only getting about $1,700. That's why I'm saying in today's video here that if a landlords in general are getting um, you know, freebies to renters, uh, you have to look at the net effect regarding this and not just the bottom line regarding what was the asking rent for the unit here. Something else you guys should be aware of as well, which I talk about on the channel uh, pretty frequently here, is that we should see um, asking rents uh, decrease as we approach 2024 and as we get into 2024. Uh, this is because the amount of um, buildings or multifamily units um, under construction right now are at all time record highs. As these buildings get completed, this will put downward pressure on prices into 2024. So therefore, landlords will have more vacancies to fill and therefore less leeway to increase prices here. So let's also look at our good Uncle Fred here regarding that. Here's the number of units with buildings of five units or more. The vast majority of these units or these buildings here are apartment buildings in which the builder or the owner plans to rent out. So right now, the uh, seasonally adjusted um, annualized rate is 986,000 for the month of July, an all-time record high going back to at least January 1970. And by the way, uh, the previous all-time record high uh, before uh, COVID was around 1973 when at that time it was just under 900,000. And again, right now it's well above that at 986,000. Therefore, because this is at all time record highs for the amount of apartment buildings under construction, this will put demo pressure on rent prices going forward. Redfin also uh, touch on this as well. Uh, they said, even though rents are hovering near all time record highs, they're no longer posting large year over year price jumps uh, like we saw over the past two years. Uh, when rental demand, of course, was surging. Uh, in August 2022, for instance, the median asking price uh, for rent was up by 12.3% year over year. Uh, rent growth has cooled over the past year due to slowing household formation, economic uncertainty, affordability challenges, and an increase in rental supply. And also, as I mentioned right there, a big increase in supply uh, coming up as well once those units uh, get completed here. Also, the uh, amount of rents and the uh, variances between uh, one year ago vary quite a bit depending on each of the regions here. So for example, in the West, the median asking rent decreased by 1.1% year over year this August, uh, whereas in the South, it decreased by 0.3%. By comparison, asking rents uh, increased by 4.6% year over year this August to a record 1,000 $434 per month in the Midwest, and also increased by 1.2% uh, to $2,509 in the Northeast. Also talking about affordability challenges in the West, look at that, $2,469 per month in the West, whereas the Midwest, only $1,434, about $1,000 more per month on average in the West compared to the Midwest. They also say here, the rental market has cooled quickly in the West and the South, in part because those markets saw giant increases in rent prices, especially during the onset of COVID here. Uh, rents skyrocketed as people flooded into Sun Belt cities, uh, such as Phoenix, Miami, and Dallas. But once that uh, rental market has cooled off, rents in these regions have more room to fall. The West has also been disproportionately impacted by layoffs in the tech sector, which may be contributing to a soft rental market. With that said, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll definitely keep you posted uh, regarding uh, construction of apartment buildings and kind of figuring out how that's gonna impact uh, a rental market as well. Uh, so thank you so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you. Hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.